Thanks very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, climate change uh, is an emergency for our planet, and it's important that this House come together. And I, I've heard conversations in this House already that uh, we need action and, and not more words. But when you look outside of this place uh, and you see Canadians that, 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 and, and our constituents, uh, and some don't fully understand the need for immediate action, the need for stronger action, I think it's incredibly important as a sign of leadership for every single one of us in this House to stand up and say this is a climate emergency and we need stronger action uh, from this government. Now, I'll be splitting my time with the, the member for Halifax, who I know is a strong supporter of climate action as well. Uh, we've known that this has been uh, an emergency for some time now. In the fall, I was one of a handful of MPs uh, to call for an emergency debate in this House and note that climate change is an emergency. But of course, it's not just uh, political leaders in Canada, uh, political leaders around the world who are noting this. Uh, scientists for too many years have been telling us this. We have the Inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report most recently say, the authors say, if we don't act now, if we don't act in the next few years, uh, we face very, very serious consequences uh, for our planet. A consensus of economists, we've got, or, or scientists, I should say, this is, this is a quote from the speaker from over 15,000 scientists from over 180 countries. They write, since 1992, with the exception of stabilizing the stratospheric ozone layer, humanity has failed to make sufficient progress in generally solving these foreseen environmental challenges, and alarmingly, most of them are getting worse. Especially troubling is the current trajectory of potentially catastrophic climate change due to rising greenhouse gas emissions from burning fossil fuels, deforestation, and agricultural production. To prevent widespread misery, and catastrophic biodiversity loss, humanity must practice a more environmentally sustainable alternative to business as usual. Without question, Madam Speaker, climate change presents us with uh, a challenge, yes, but it is our international, our intergenerational, and fundamentally our moral responsibility to do our part. And so what does that mean, doing our part? I think, I think it's helpful to, to, to assess where have we been and where do we need to go. Now, we know that previous conservative and, and, yes, liberal governments have not done enough. Uh, the last conservative government did the bare minimum. And uh, while we are not yet on pace to meet our international obligations as, uh, as this liberal government, without question, we have made significant and meaningful progress. Let me quote here Mark Jacquard, professor of sustainable energy at Simon Fraser University. He writes, in just four years, new federal policies have transformed Canada from a global pariah under the Harper government to a model for climate action under this Prime Minister. In climate policy, experts agree that Canada is finally a global leader. That's not a partisan writing that, Madam Speaker. That's not a liberal writing that, Madam Speaker. That's, the prof that's a professor at Simon Fraser University in this very subject matter. Now, what are these new federal policies that, that, have, that have made Canada a leader in tackling climate change? Most of the attention, Madam Speaker, has been on pricing pollution, and for good reason. You have uh, provincial con conservative government in Ontario spending $30 million to spread misinformation about the plan. Yet it remains the most efficient and effective solution to tackling climate change. Of course, we know it's not the only solution, and we clearly need additional actions when there is such political consternation over this, this single, over pricing pollution alone. So what has the government done, this government done, in the last four years? I'm going to go down a long list, Madam Speaker. I know my colleagues in the opposition suggest, oh, all we hear about is taxing. All we hear about is taxing. So, so here's a long list for the members opposite. Green procurement rules, accelerated phase out of coal-fired electricity, strong methane regulations to reduce these emissions 40 to 45 percent, HFC regulations to implement the Montreal Protocol, the pricing backstop, which, just as a, as a side note, uh, contrary to that $30 million misinformation campaign, the Independent Parliamentary Budget Office notes that 80% of individuals and families will actually get more money back. So it is the top 20% wealthiest and most polluting Canadians who are going to pay, and even those individuals will pay a very small sum to do their part on the most pressing challenge of our time. What else have we done? Clean fuel standard, net zero building codes, incentives for electric vehicles and EV charging stations across the country, public transit investments, and of course infrastructure investments like housing that factor in the need to upgrade uh, and, and, and have retrofits uh, to tackle climate change as well and to reduce building emissions. 
clean tech investments, including uh, strategic innovation fund investments. We've got the, and, and the accelerated capital cost allowance uh, for clean tech. We've got the Challenge and Low Carbon Economy Fund. That's two billion dollars uh, investing in, in, in uh, bu businesses uh, to do their part and to reduce their emissions, and, and to ensure provinces who are actually doing their part have funds to invest in these renewable energies as well. And of course, uh, the food guide uh, and investments in plant-based foods in Saskatchewan. Now, are we where are we are we where we need to be? No, no, the answer is no, we're not. It's, it's, it's fair to point out, we are not where we need to be. But have we made significant and meaningful progress in a very short period of time? When you look at, at, at how difficult this issue and how intractable when you see the opposition from the Conservatives, how difficult this issue can be? Without question. We, we have, and this is based on the most recent analysis, we have 200 millions of tons reduction model based on, based on the, the measures that we are implementing. There's 24 million tons to account for our forestry. So we are 79 million tons and, and the opposition members say, well, you're short. Well, I, not, not quite, Madam Speaker. That's short on modeled measures. But it, they're not modeling our public transit investments. They're not modeling our clean tech investments. And so of the 79 million tons that we are short on the current targets, yes, we need to do more. But we are not so very far short, and we are certainly not short those 79 million tons because we know that certain measures we put in place will make a significant impact. They just can't be easily modeled. Now, what more do we need to do? I, I would say we are well on the way to meeting the current target, but of course, we know that that 2030 target, and yes, if we want to call it the Harper target, we know that that target is itself insufficient. Did it make sense for us to spend a great amount of time in this place over the first three and a half years suggesting we need stronger targets when we had 10 years of complete and total inaction and there was no way we could even, we could, we could, we could meet that stronger target? I would say no. The focus should have been on, on strong action. But we are now at a place where meeting that Harper target is feasible heading, into tw heading towards 2030. We know, though, that it is insufficient. So, so what do we need to do next? Well, the Paris Agreement itself contemplates a ratcheting up of these targets. And so at the next opportunity, 2020, 2021, there will be an opportunity for Canada to attend an international conference and to say, alongside other countries, we are all ratcheting up our targets so that we are holding ourselves more accountable so that we do more. So yes, we need to ratchet up our 2030 target at the next opportunity. We also need to think further ahead for the sake of our planet. The UK Climate Change Committee, an independent advisory committee, just recently, at the beginning of this month, called for net zero by 2050. The EU Commission, I was just recently in, in Brussels and I'm at the Directorate General uh, of Environment there, and they also are putting materials together calling for net zero by 2050. If we need more ambition here in Canada, I think. We, we've, we've come a long way, we've made significant and meaningful progress, but now is the time to call a climate emergency, now is the time for more ambition. So we need stronger 2030 targets and we need to be net zero and aim for net zero by 2050. And we need strong accountability update, uh, strong accountability measures and clear updates uh, to, uh, on that path to 2050. Now, targets are not enough. And so we, we don't only need to ratchet up our targets, Every single step we've taken to date, every single policy measure we've put into place, we also need to strengthen those. So the, the price on pollution should not stop in, in 2022. The investments we've made in retrofits, we should build on those. The investments we've made in electric vehicle infrastructure, we should build on those. The currently voluntary targets for EVs should probably in future become mandatory targets. But Madam Speaker, we can finally say that Canada is a global climate leader, is on the right path, and we simply need to double down on our current efforts to get to where we need to be to do our part to tackle the most pressing issue of our time. And yes, Madam Speaker, this is an emergency. This government understands that and is acting as if it is an emergency, and I wish every member in this House, regardless of party, would acknowledge that fact and vote to call this an emergency in the coming weeks. Thank you. Good job, Nate. The honor, uh, questions and comments, the honor